Hi everyone and welcome back to Toxic Tuesdays. How has everyone's week been? What's new? What's happening? What have we learned? What have we accomplished? I'd love to hear all of it down below in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe while you're there. My week has been really, really busy. School is back, so getting back into that routine. I've actually ordered a whole bunch of new books and one of them has arrived, which is absolutely gorgeous. It is this one right here which is Botanical Curses and Poisons, The Shadow Lives of Plants by Fez Inkwright. And it is absolutely gorgeous, if I do say so myself. Um, and this has been just absolutely fascinating to read. I definitely recommend it uh, if you are interested in reading a little bit more about the curses and poisons of plants, which, I mean, if you're here at Toxic Tuesday, <laughs> you have a little bit of interest at least anyway. Uh, but something I definitely love about this book is in the back, it actually has a uh, biography and uh, like further reading, which for me is a little bit like Pinterest. So you start having a look at it and you kind of go down the rabbit hole and you see all these other books that you can kind of read and, and add to your, your reading list, which if you're anything like myself, your reading list is a lot longer than <laughs> what your current read list is, but it's always good to add more to it. But that is my newest treasure that I have added to my library. I'll show you my other ones when they do arrive, but um, yeah, that's the, the latest for me for this week so far. Uh, but let's get into the video. So for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Bethany Bugin, and this is Toxic Tuesdays, a series where we talk about toxic plants that you may or may not have in your backyard, and we learn a little bit more about them. So for today's video, we're looking at Nota Bubon Galbanum. Nota Bubon Galbanum is more commonly known as blister bush. It is a woody evergreen shrub that grows to about 2.5 metres high and is part of the carrot family Apiaceae. It has compound leaves that are arranged along the upper parts of the branches and look very similar to flat parsley or celery leaves. The flower head is green with a slightly yellow appearance. It is made up of tiny yellow flowers that occur in large green compound umbels, a bit like water hemlock and giant hogweed. The fruits of bitterbush are actually quite unusual as they are surrounded by an almost continuous ring of oil canals called vitae. These canals contain compounds that are believed to protect the nutrient rich seed from insects. Blister bush is native to South Africa, specifically the Table Mountain and the Western Cape Fold Belt region of the Western Cape. It can be found growing at medium to high altitudes in dampened and partial shaded areas. It's predominantly found on mountain slopes, however it can be found at lower altitudes in full sun. The surface of blister bush is covered in a mixture of chemicals including sorallin, xanthotoxin and bergafen. These cause phototoxic reactions to the skin, which can cause blistering and itching, some of which can occur two to three days after exposure. Exposing the affected skin to ultraviolet light, such as sunlight, can cause the toxins to trigger their effects. This can then lead to the itching and blistering to worsen. Washing the affected area immediately after exposure may help prevent the phototoxic reaction, but the best method is actually to apply sunscreen to the affected area. This will then actually stop the phototoxic reaction uh, from occurring as the sunscreen will prevent the UV light coming through to set it off. Alternatively, you can also kind of make sure that this doesn't happen at all by wearing protective clothing if you are, say, hiking in an area where the plant is present or if you are wanting to plant it. Despite the obvious obstacles when it comes to handling blister bush, it actually does have quite a range of medicinal properties. In the traditional medicine of the indigenous people of the Cape, an infusion can be made from the foliage, which is reportedly an excellent diuretic. A brandy tincture of the leaves has been used to treat obesity in men, and blister bush has also been used in the treatment of rheumatism, gout, bladder issues, water retention, and high blood pressure. 
And that is everything on today's video for Blister Bush. Thank you all so much for watching. If you could smash that like and subscribe button, it really does help me out. And I will catch you all on the next episode of Toxic Tuesdays. Stay safe, guys. Have a lovely week and keep on learning. Bye.